नाजरीन कश्मीर लाइफ के साइंस टॉक्स में आपका खुश आमदीद जैसा कि आप जानते हैं कि आजकल दुनिया जिस नई चीज के साथ बिजी है वो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस है और आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस नए नए तमाशे आजकल बनाती है नई नई चीजें और इससे काफी एक इंटरवेंशन हो गया है यहाँ पूरी दुनिया की इकोनमी इकोनॉमीज में ये जो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस है बहुत पहले से थी लेकिन अब ये मार्केट में आने लगी है बहुत सारे ऐप्स आने लगे हैं इसके साथ डीप मशीन लर्निंग कनेक्टेड इसी के साथ है या और बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जो इंडस्ट्रियल रेवल्यूशन तीन और चार ने पूरे वर्ल्ड को दिया है तो इस मामले पर बात करने के लिए आज हमने तकलीफ दी है शफात काजी साहब को ये अमेरिका में एक मेजर इनका एक अपना अपनी कंपनी है जो कम्प्लीटली आईटी से ही शुरू हो गई और तब से शुरू है जब आईटी और इंटरनेट के जो के जो मिलाप से शुरुआत हुई एक नए इनकलाब की सनती इनकलाब की तब से ये काम कर रही है इनका एक सॉफ्टवेयर है जो टाइम मैनेजमेंट के हिसाब से है तो इस सिलसिले पे बात करने के लिए शफात साहब से ही बात करेंगे शफात साहब आपका खुश आमदीद कश्मीर लाइफ के साइंस स्टॉक्स में शुरुआत इस बात से करेंगे शफात साहब कि ये जो आजकल आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस का दौर है शुरुआत तो है और शुरुआत बहुत पहले से हुई थी लेकिन आम लोगों तक ये बातें अब आ गई हैं लेकिन आप टेक्नोलॉजी और नॉलेज के बड़ी मंडी में रहते हैं काम करते हैं कंपीट करते हैं तो इसके गोल पोस्ट आपको कहाँ कहाँ लग रहे हैं फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मसूद साहब थैंक यू फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी एज अ गेस्ट for your science talk i always appreciate the work you do you do wonderful work i'm a big fan of kashmir life i follow you guys for a long time i just wanted to take a moment before i answer your specific question i went to burnhall school uh, so hi to all uh, hallians out there uh, and i moved to america at a very young age ended up doing my masters from new york and uh, then moved to california which is the mac of technology um and and started my uh, company uh, bqe software in um, in california which is is probably one of the biggest uh, kashmiri based uh, software technology company in the world right now and continues to grow very rapidly inshallah you know will achieve a lot um so a very proud thing for me as well as kashmir is that i have helped this company become what it is and then of course you know other parts of the world that also contributed because pq is spread quite a bit um so that's the background but i i i have to tell you i was i was literally 14 years old when i was got interested in technology and i built a fm radio station at the age of 16 and and i got into trouble uh, with law Uh, because it was banned in kashmir to build a radio station magar me bano panyas kamras mo sur 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 i was good at electronics so i built it and i would broadcast radio programs at 5 pm for one hour and uh, and it had become very popular so that's how i started my life in technology um, but of course you know then i got a knock at the door uh, late 10 pm one evening by police and uh, we all got surprised and they took all my uh, electronic equipment including my uh, fm radio station equipment but anyway today i think masood saab ke ushe were at a junction in in technology where i believe that the biggest revolution bigger than the industrial revolution bigger than the revolution caused by internet itself um is coming up which is really us at the verge of creating superhumans superhumans are going to eventually do everything that we do and they're going to do it faster and they're going to do it better so that's where the artificial intelligence uh, comes into play which we have obviously worked for many years you know i gave a talk almost 5 years ago to a very large audience about what the ai is going to mean to us and and more importantly ki artificial intelligence chik hai so the key for us is we're we're at a point where now we have built what we call as the natural language processors which means an ability for computers to understand natural language and extract the 
context of the conversation or the or the prompt or the question, we have built deep neural networks which are basically allowing us to then create references. And then the GPT technology, which many of people now know because of chat GPT, the transformative technology <laughs> is at its best. I mean, yesterday they released GPT-4 and it's mind-blowing, literally mind-blowing. And <clears throat> what does that really mean for average human being? For average human being, it means that we will now have tools that will make our life much easier, which means that we are going to be able to focus on better things. It doesn't mean our jobs will be taken. It doesn't mean that we will, you know, there's a threat to our civilization. None of that. I think it's more like we're, in, we're now going to actually accelerate in our findings, in our research, in our development, in our comfort level, even in our lifestyles. So most exciting time for artificial intelligence, and I can go deeper into it, but I don't want to bore people with too much technology stuff. But uh, I, I think this is this is the biggest. And and don't forget that the, for example, the self-driving cars is also driven by AI of its own, where it's where it's able to label the images, and and from that labeling. Uh, learn about what's what and make decisions on how to drive on any road, you know, and and you know that I'm beta testing Tesla's full self-driving software right now, and I get very early releases of it, and it is amazing to see my car drive me from my home to my uh, office or any place I want to go. I want to have a dinner at a restaurant. I just punch in the address, and it drives literally from point to point without me uh, having to drive the car. So that's something that I'm experiencing today, but I'm pretty sure somebody in Kashmir will probably experience it five years to seven years from now, uh, because it takes a little longer for technologies to kind of spread around the world and get it to that level. But what I'm seeing today is, is something that the rest of the world probably will see in five, seven years. So we have to get ready for these self-driving cars as well as these robots and artificial intelligence based technologies that will transform our work. So what's up? Uh, uh, basically, when we talk of AI, or when we talk of uh, uh, the new uh, changes that uh, this uh, Industrial Revolution 4 has triggered, there are a lot of allied subjects like we have data science, we have deep machine learning, we have language models you talked about. But in all these things, before talking about these things, I would uh, request to you to kindly uh, tell us about the company you built uh, and basically it is about data management, it is about time management. So it needs, it stores, it requires. Uh, data and it it changes almost on a daily basis because new new things come, new challenges market me come. So we would, our Nazrin, ko thoda bata den ki BKU ke matlab iski history, iski iski struggles or basically is company ki struggle aap ki struggle hai. Yes. So thoda sa bata den is iske baare me and uh, what is the state and status of BKU worldwide right now? So BKU software. Um that I started uh, from my garage, literally, um, and and bet everything on it because I believed that there was a pain point in small businesses, especially for consultant businesses, architects, engineers, lawyers, accountants, where they did not have a good technology or a software that would manage their offices, not just time management, but basically take that time and convert that into invoices. So those invoices can be billed to their clients and they can collect the money. So I wanted to have that end-to-end -end solution for these businesses where the technology would manage their business. And, and BQE grew really fast uh, with our first product being Bill Quick. And then later on, we introduced another product called Core. And uh, and we had, you know, at one point in time, over 400,000 uh, users using our software. And in... Uh, in 2021, BQE was uh, uh, fortunate enough to have many private equity firms obviously interested in investing in BQE, and we picked 
uh, a firm called Serent uh, uh, that um, invested in BQE because uh, their goals were in line with my my goals, and they're now on the driver's seat with a majority ownership. I still maintain a good chunk of the ownership, and they're driving the company really well, better than I was driving it and experiencing good growth. Their goal is obviously to take it to the next level. I don't know what that next level would be, whether it will be go public on stock market or have another uh, exit to a larger um, strategic buyer. Uh, not sure exactly where that will be, but all I'm saying is that I enjoy being part of the board right now, working with them and learning from them because we're now talking about a different level of business metrics and uh, then it was with me uh, so not only am i a more learned person but also very proud to see the company be where it is today and where it's actually heading to uh, but more importantly i'm proud of the team uh, you probably know we have over 100 employees in kashmir um, so very proud of that team um, to really work at par with engineers from America and Australia and other parts of the world um, and, and develop this world-class software. Uh, so for those who believe that uh, Kashmir is not a good place to start a technology company, they stand corrected because BQE is a, is a living proof of how we can build really good companies. And you already know there are other companies like we've seen uh, recently, Gatos and uh, uh, Fast Beetle and others getting picked uh, by by Shark Tanks and others. So uh, the investment market is very ripe. So I would highly encourage Kashmiris to consider going into technology and building a uh, technology-based solution because that's where the world is moving. And so that, you know, it's clear also that my thinking is technology is no longer a vertical. You know, we used to say, oh, technology is a vertical, but technology is now a horizontal. It's actually the plumbing underneath every tech, every industry, whether you are in transportation, hospitality, restaurants, whatever, doesn't matter. All, everybody needs technology now. Everybody needs software. So even in your business of publishing, you need technology. Uh, as a matter of fact, you're doing this interview over Zoom. So you need technology, you need software to run your business smoothly. So uh, basically, uh, jo, uh, mein hum is उसमें कुछ चीजें आगे आ रही हैं और कुछ चीजें शायद पीछे जा रही हैं जैसे कि आपने बताया यू आर परहप्स वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट जिसने ये जो गाड़ियां खुद ही चलती हैं उस पे सफर किया तो ये सारी चीजें जो बन रही हैं नया इंकलाब जो आ रहा है इसमें ह्यूमन इंटरवेंशन बैक एंड पे जा रहा है फ्रंट एंड पे अब आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस जा रही है तो क्या इसका ये मतलब है कि आपने तो वैसे शुरू में एट द आउटसेट यू सेड दैट uh, not many jobs will be taken away, but the fact is that if you convert uh, even half of public transport driven by artificial intelligence in Srinagar or in Delhi or in any other uh, at any other place, you actually are uh, pushing a lot of people uh, out of jobs. So, so and yes. the skill set hai, skill set is not enough and adequate for the back end. So what are we heading towards? Are we getting into a new kind of unemployment and necessarily the depression that it will cause for the economies of the world? I I, I definitely uh, see your point. Let's say, for example, we're going to have self-driving cars. Will all the taxi drivers you know, get unemployed, as an example? Um, the answer is yes, uh, they will get unemployed. But think about it this way. What is the lifestyle of that taxi driver? It's a very low end, very mundane job that doesn't require much of the cognitive you know, uh, thinking to uh, execute that job. So, so what we're really doing, we're taking these low end jobs that doesn't require much of a brain power or are very logical and you know systematic. And we're replacing them with technology to allow the same group of people to be retrained into doing other more valuable tasks. Uh, there is always that chance that somebody who's 50, 60, 70 years old may say, I'm not going to learn the new skills. But somebody who's young, maybe 30 years old, 
And he doesn't drive the taxi anymore because the taxi business got taken by self-driving cars. That person may go ahead and pick another skill that actually pays better and is needed better and cannot be replaced with computers yet. Um, many people don't know this, that uh, that the airplanes you know, have been on autopilot for many, many years. As a matter of fact, a Boeing 787 is hardly ever landed by a pilot. You know, it's always taken care of by the technology, the computers, because they can do a better job than humans. They can um, literally do a perfect landing. So, but the pilot's still in the seat, right? Because of the federal regulations. Uh, but technically, the pilot's not flying the plane, pilot's not landing the plane. Um, so if we trust our cells in the air to uh, technology, and we see that it's actually allowed us to have better planes and you know less crashes, the same will happen to, uh, to other industries like self-driving cars. They will replace a lot of industries, including including the need for uh, for you to drop your kids to school, right? So now when your kids have to go to school, they'll go sit in your car and it will go drop them and come back. And, and as a matter of fact, your car may actually not be your car. Your car may be more like a subscription where you can press a button, a car comes in and takes you to wherever you want. Why do you even have to own a car? Uh, and why do we even need garages? And why do we even need parking lots, right? We can just have the cars be moving around all the time. So that's what I'm anticipating is that these things will happen. But but will there be unemployment? For example, if you if I ask Chat GPT to write a article yes. about artificial yes. intelligence, it will do a wonderful job. Although you would still take your pen and edit it a little bit because it's not going to meet your standard. But it will be a starting article that you can use as a, as a startup and then build your article on top of that. At some point in time, it will replace your editing requirements completely. It will do a perfect job. It will write a perfect article that you don't need to touch. But what you want it to write is going to still be your call because you're the editor and you know what the world wants to hear about. So, so it'll be simply a tool that you will use to make your job easier, but not necessarily a replacement for journalists like yourself. So uh, given the challenge that I was about to, uh, I was going to ask you the same thing that uh, what a reporter does uh, to a copy, a sub-editor does to a copy for half an hour, Chat GPT does in barely half a minute. So that is a lot of uh, the flip side of it. And uh, the possibility of how publishers would increasingly get into replacing uh, real human beings, real professionals by uh, robots or uh, these uh, applications. But given that challenge as it may have in coming days, we are not fully aware what it is going to hold for future. But like is baat jo hamari ek to ab to you you jaise ki maine pehle bhi kaha ki aap knowledge ki mandi mein kaam karte hain compete karte hain on equal basis usme koi discount nahi hota hai usme koi subsidy nahi hoti hai na knowledge ki aur na resources ki to uh, how should how should third world countries jisme hum log rehte hain how should we uh, craft our curriculum, our study style to uh, uh, manage ke aane wale dunoon mein hum zyada taklif mein na rahe. Well, <laughs> uh, one thing is for sure that we will actually have a lot more time than, you know, we did because we're wasting so much time right now on these useless things. Uh, I tell people, you know, then uh, it's going to take our jobs, you know. And by the way, it's not just journalists, you know. It it can do wonderful job writing computer software. So even programmers are in, in danger. It can do a wonderful job doing accounting. It can do a wonderful job doing engineering calculations for building designs and airplane designs and everything. So it, it can replace pretty much all knowledge-based workers. Um, 
So, so the only thing you want to replace is is maybe your dentist and and your barber who's going to do your haircut. Although I, I expect that to also happen someday, but right yet they haven't done those personal services. You know, nobody's focused on it. So I think your barber, your doctor, your dentist, uh, and your uh, you know nail salons and and uh, other beauty shops they will survive. Uh, I also think that um, that you know the clothing industry will survive to some extent, although there's automation. But the knowledge worker definitely will be replaced. The key is not about uh, about replacing knowledge workers and unemployment. We never should be afraid of it. I, I remember actually a book I read. I, I don't remember exactly the name of the book, but it was about Hoover Dam. If you remember, Hoover Dam is one of the biggest dams in America, and it was built during the deep recession, and and uh, and it was during that time that they came up with the concept of the caterpillar uh, digging machine, right? Which could really dig as much as twenty laborers could dig in one day, and and there were over ten thousand people employed in digging, right? Because they were building a dam. And somebody went to uh, the president and said that uh, that we have this problem. We have these machines that are replacing one machine is replacing twenty people, and it's doing it faster too. Uh, we're going to have a lot of unemployment because we'll have to lay off a lot of workers, a lot of laborers. And and uh, and the president picked a spoon, and he gave it to that guy, and he said. I have an idea. Why don't we give the spoon to our workers? Then we will slow the process of digging and we can actually have to hire more people and we'll create jobs. And they all looked at him and he said, look, what do you want to do? You can't, you can't really fight technology and change. You can't say, let's, let's, get rid, let's not get the machine that digs faster, better, continue digging with a spade. That's not really the solution. The solution is to to find ways to retrain the workers so that they can be doing those high level jobs. They can be programming these robots. They can be engineering these uh, AI technologies for future. They can be working on uh, medical researches that, uh, you know, that uh, address some of the serious threats that we have, including like COVID kind of virus. Uh, so that's where I think human beings will be focused is challenging jobs that AI doesn't, you know, have know how right now how to solve those. What do you suggest for third world countries about their जो हम बच्चों को पढ़ाते हैं हमें क्या पढ़ाना चाहिए मतलब ये कहा जा रहा है कि you have to start early. Yes. तो अभी भी early है for third world. तो how should they design uh, the curriculum for the next generation so that they don't face the awkwardness of being misplaced in a new world where machine will have a much bigger role. Well, first of all, I think, um, ironically, um, India, which is a third world country, and Kashmir too. Uh, but when it comes to education, they are first world. Uh, both India and Kashmir provide one of the best education system I have seen in the world. Uh, most people from India and Kashmir, they thrive because of the good school system. I and mean, look at the CEO of Google and CEO of Microsoft. You know, they're all Indian graduates. Um, IIT graduates from India are always at top positions in US and worldwide. So, um, so I, I think that if we continue on the path of science and technology, uh, and and focus on that, and whether that person then eventually becomes a, a computer science engineer, or he becomes uh, the uh, doctor, or 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 a dentist, or for that reason, you know, uh, uh, even a uh, a scientist, um, all that is fine because there will be process in in the world where they will be accommodated. Even when you're training artificial intelligence, I'm pretty sure. Uh, engineers will be needed for that particular task. So, uh, Shafat Sab, uh, before concluding this uh, knowledge conversation, I have a 
आखिरी सवाल आपसे पूछूंगा इन कंक्लूजन में ये मैंने कई जो इन साइंटिस्ट से मैंने बात की या प्रैक्टिशनर ऑफ साइंस या जो मतलब जानते हैं ये जो ये दुनिया नई दुनिया है इंटेलिजेंट दुनिया है तो इसके बारे में एक सवाल पूछना चाहिए जब इंटरनेट आ गया था तो कहा गया कि दिस इज द दिस पर ओनली डेमोक्रेटिक टूल that has evolved which will bind societies make uh, things happen faster and make people listen to their issues aur uske sath ye bhi kaha gaya hai ki this will be a huge leveler ye sab ko ek buniyad de dega jo na playing field to aur ye bhi kaha gaya hai ki jo duniya ki puri daulat hai wo uska 95% hissa jo hai वो पांच परसेंट लोगों के पास है और जो बाकी पांच परसेंट है पचानवे परसेंट है उनके पास बहुत कम है सो so, ये भी कहा गया लेकिन अब ये सिचुएशन ये है कि इसी नॉलेज की बुनियाद पर इसी डेमोक्रेटिक टूल की बुनियाद पर नाउ वी आर बीइंग मैनेज्ड बाय द पीपल हु नो दिस नॉलेज चाहे गूगल की बात आप करें आप माइक्रोसॉफ्ट की बात करें आप एप्पल uh, की बात करें मतलब यही तो ये कंपनीज 20, 25, 30, सौ दो सौ हो सकती है तो क्या आपको नहीं लगता कि ह्यूमैनिटी विल बी मैनेजड बाय नाउ मोर लेसर पीपल अर्लियर वेल्थ वाज ए क्रिटेरियन अभी तो टेक्नोलॉजी इज द बेस अब तो ये टेक्नोलॉजी सुकड़ सुकड़ के गई दो सौ तीन सौ कंपनीज के पास और पूरा आठ बिलियन पॉपुलेशन पूरी दुनिया का उनके रहम करम पे है Don't you think this is the flip side of it? I uh, I think it's the beginning of uh, the equilibrium. I'm a big believer on uh, Nash's equilibrium theory. Um, I don't think the wealth can stay concentrated at the top five percent uh, because that's not an equilibrium. So how does the economical equilibrium achieve? So what you're seeing right now, which is you know. Google and Microsoft and Amazon and others carrying majority of the wealth, and you know Elon Musk and uh, Jeff Bezos being the richest people, or for that reason even you know Indian uh, entrepreneurs. It's a transitional state, the way I see it. Um, we're already seeing Indian companies being listed in stock markets in foreign countries, including U.S. we're already seeing a private equity bring in their money and wealth to countries like india and spreading that so eventually i think there will be equilibrium i mean look at where china is today right 15 years ago you would have looked at china and would have said there's no way to come close to us's economy and today um it is the second largest economy in the world and is anticipated to go exceed us economy at, at a very soon rate so i think the same thing will happen with india the same thing will happen with africa which will then create an economic equilibrium where we don't have united states gdp being six times larger than china's uh we have a flattening of gdp's india's gdp's will come up uh but all this will take time all this will take 20 30 years but i don't think it has necessarily any connection with uh any connection with the internet for that reason or technology it has it has to do with what we did many many years ago through the world trade uh, organization wto where we made the import export between india and us and india and china china and us much easier with under favored nation strategies low tariffs you can today buy a uh, same car uh, let's say a toyota camry that i can buy here in us you know when i grew up there were only two cars fiat and ambassador so these merging economies did make you know toyota rich initially but eventually india is now catching up and it'll build its own car um so i i'm a big believer in theory of equilibrium i do believe that eventually wealth dif- differentiations won't be that great uh as they are today but you're right right now it does seem to be top heavy but i don't think that's lasting uh too many years shafat sab humne jab bhi aapko darkhas ki ki hame apne jo knowledge ka thoda sa hum hamare sath bhi share kare apne tajurbe अपनी चैलेंजेस अपने सक्सेसेस तो हमने आपने हमेशा हमें टाइम दिया 
ہم آپ کے نہایت مشکور ہیں اور ہم کوشش کریں گے اور ہم دعا کریں گے کہ کوئی اور بہانہ آنے والے دنوں میں ہو جائے کہ ہم ایک بار پھر بات کریں آپ کے آپ نے اتنا ٹائم ہم کو دیا ہم آپ کے نہایت ہی مشکور ہیں مشکور رہیں گے ان شاء اللہ آئی ول بی ان کشمیر دس اسپرنگ لیٹ اسپرنگ ارلی سمر مائی فلم سانگس آف پیراڈائز از گیٹنگ ریڈی آئی ایم لوکنگ فارورڈ ٹو ایٹ لیسٹ ڈو پریمیئر ان ان تھیٹرس دیئر ہوپ فلی سو دیٹ ول بی انادر مومنٹ ول نو شیئر مے بی ایٹ دیٹ پوائنٹ ان شاء اللہ تھینک یو سر سو نائس آف یو تھینک یو سو